sowed a load of wood just now. Got, uh, let me row that up. Got uh, 200 out of it, sowed a big load. Let's see, I'm multitasking by myself. $200. Pays off, buddy. The work does, it pays off. $210 actually, because he gave me a tip. How I came to start delivering him to begin with was another guy that I delivered to. And I delivered to him this year. He lives in Winchester. This guy lives in Lexington. So, um, anyways, uh, that guy had told him about me, this guy that I just delivered to. Um, and so this is my first time actually delivering to him. But um, he, he seems like he's interested in being a regular customer, you know. He said it's really hard to find a reliable source of wood. And uh, he had an accent like uh, German or something, Russian, German, something like that. He definitely had an accent. He was a doctor or something, or maybe nurse, because he came out and it looked like scrubs, like blue. And uh, I stacked that load in my truck, but I normally don't do that. But where I don't have a headache crack, I didn't want to just throw it in there loose and bust my windshield. I busted two of those rear windshields like that. So uh, once a piece of wood hits them, I mean, they shatter. I've done it twice. So, um, so I didn't want to do that. So I stacked it, decided to stack it instead. But... But, uh, so he may be a regular customer because he said, yeah, we usually go through two of these, you know, what I, what I brought him, which is around two face cords of wood. Um, and, uh, he said, we usually go through two of these a year. And I said, well, yeah, you know, I'll be doing it all winter, you know, so just let me know. And, uh, but I love firewood. I do. It's, uh, it's awesome. Just driving the deliveries are, are probably one of my most one of the most enjoyable parts as well because it's the payoff you know and then you're it's easy you're just driving out there and I, here in kentucky i get to see some beautiful scenery and uh so i'll drive out it's kind of raining a little bit right now but i'll drive out and uh you know usually carter's with me too he they had to do homeschool a little bit later today so he's he was at uh, home doing homeschool about to and um this guy didn't get off work, I think, until around six or something. So he wanted me to get there at six. Um, so that's about that's what I did. I think I got there about five minutes till. So it did pretty good on the timing, and uh, it took me, I'd say, around 30 minutes to stack that because where I had it stacked in my truck and I didn't have Carter with me, I had to get up in there. And what I did was, you know, the first row was easy to get to because I could reach up in there and get it. But then after that, the second row, I had to climb up in the truck, and what I would do was just grab it try to grab one piece in each hand at a time and throw them out and I'd make a pile and I'd, I'd try to get through one whole roll if I could you know or at least halfway and then jump down st stack that I that that I threw out then get back up in there and throw throw the rest out and I had four rows like that so three that I had to jump up in there and throw out so I'm really wanting to later dump dump bed would be very handy extremely handy but there's a very uh, much cheaper thing that seems like it worked just as well really um, and, and now I don't know, some of you all may have used this before. Some I've been wanting to try for years because I've seen them. And I don't know why I haven't bought one already, really. But uh, they've got a handle on it. It connects to your tailgate. And it's like a chain netting that goes in your bed. And you just crank that, that handle. And uh, you can pull out mulch or firewood or whatever with it. Now, I don't know if you can do firewood when it's that much weight. I don't know. But if it would work like that and that handle, I could actually crank that handle. Oh man, that would, that would make that so much easier. Um, but anyways, I'm heading home now. That's at $200 right there. So anybody out there, you need extra money, you got a chainsaw, and uh, you don't even have to have a truck. My first year, I did it with a trailer. But a truck is definitely a, definitely a big help, or four-wheel drive too, especially. But if you've got to start out with a trailer, you know, and especially if you got a four-wheel drive to pull that trailer with, trailers work great too if you can if you got something to pull them with. <laughs> Definitely looks like fall now, don't it? What do you think, boy? I love it. You love it? Yeah. You love firewood? Yeah. Me too. Beautiful day today. Beautiful day today. Me and Carter are glad to be back into this firewood. It's it's every year. It's like it's, I don't know, deja vu, I guess they call it. or I don't know if that's the right word, but how you it just brings back the same memories because you've got the same smells in the air you smell the wood again and and it all kind of just you know when you do something like that sometimes it might be something from childhood even something you hadn't done in a long time 
and you see the same thing or smell the same thing or feel the same thing and, or, and, and all those things at once especially it really brings back memories when that happens and that's what happens with firewood because there's so many things that are unique about it and it brings back memories man it's beautiful today too beautiful look at these beef patties right here oh yeah look at these beef patties good beefies, <laughs> good beefies. Good beefies. but anyways we're glad to, glad to be back into it i got a guy uh bill's brother supposed to be bringing me uh ronald at his name ronald's supposed to be bringing me a load of cherry wood and so we'll see what that looks like and i plan to record that and show you and split that and uh i'll continue later and show you once we get the wood wood yeah i sowed 200 dollars worth yesterday yeah made 200 dollars for it oh my goodness what's his name i cat I love. His name is love. Yeah, it's love. It's love. <laughs> this is some wood that Ronald brought me. This is all cherry. So I paid him for this load. Um, and it's not real profitable. It's profitable, but uh, I may try to get it for a little cheaper. But this load of cherry was 40. And it's enough to do probably a a truck truck uh, load which is a hundred for me so sixty dollar profit but he split this you can see him at the beginning i'll put the clip in but he split this he uh he had that fiskers when i got here splitting it so there's some of the poplar i split from here some more poplar out there that's all hickory and the red oak right there is sold now um completely sold that yesterday i sold a 200 dollar load yesterday and that'll be in here as well but this is the best smelling wood I've ever smelled right here. This hickory, or hickory, cherry. It is a, yeah, it's the best smelling wood I've ever smelled. And it splits really good too, this cherry does. So I'm always happy to get it. Got a guy right now that's wanting some actually for smoking. So, cause it's good smoking wood. So, but it's probably one of my favorite woods. It just ain't as good as uh, like hickory or oak for burning for a long period of time or the BTUs that it gives off. but. Anyways, got to get this stuff cleaned up still. I've got some big uh, popper that I got from him still that I need to get split up. Mooses, tell him what he's into. He's getting big. He's getting driven. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Good guard dog, ain't you? His bark is getting big now. Big popper there. That piece there. I need to maybe cut around off of it and then that's just mainly dirt and stuff. He said he would take that, come back, pick it up. I told him not to worry about it. I've got a couple holes that I could kind of get a mattock or something and get this dirt off, fill those in, and then just the rest I'll throw in a burn pile once I cut that piece off, pull it in my truck or something. But yeah, he was splitting this with that fish because he said, where'd you get your maw from? And I told him, uh, I told him, I said, that's a fish or splitting access. That's the best one I've ever used. And he asked me how much there was. I told him 70. And he said, well, that's a little too much. And I said, they're, they're worth it. But there's the wood I got from him. As you can see, there's all cherry right there. Shouldn't make a good truckload. I'll load it up after I'm done and we'll see. But I believe it'll make a, a full uh, truck bed. Kids are out here playing. It's a beautiful day today. Marceline, uh, she, my little girl, just learned how to ride her bicycle. She just turned seven today. Today's her birthday, so. And... That's one thing she's wanting for her birthday, which we're having her party Friday, actually. So, and uh, I'm getting her a new bicycle, so she'll like it. She, she uh, pretty much taught herself how to ride, too, though. Got it, sissy? Yeah. But anyways, I'm going to go on and get started on this stuff. I'm going to go on and buck this uh, cherry up and then split it. All right, here's this cherry that I got from Ronald. Uh, so he, uh, and the way I get it from him, I'm not making a whole lot of profit on it, but it's something I don't mind to do now and then. I definitely like to maximize my profit per delivery, you know? So meaning 
you know, when I when I make that delivery to them, you know, because you, you've got to deliver it. Well, you don't have to, but the way I do it, I deliver it. And so I want the max amount of profit. So I, if I'm getting the wood from him for, you know, some of it I've got cheaper than others. But here lately, he's been wanting like $40 a load, um, you know, and I sell it for 100 So I'm, that's $60 profit um, if I buy it from him and split it, you know. But at the same time, if I go out and do it myself, then it's a $100 profit, you know. Because I charge gas, too, if it's outside my county. If it's inside my county, I don't even charge gas. Um, and then I include stacking in it as well. Um, but I delivered to a, uh, in this video, I believe it was at the beginning, that was me leaving uh, this guy, a new customer's house, who's, uh, he lives in Lexington, and he bought a big load from me. And some of the cherry wood that I got from Ronald uh, is what I brought him, with a mix with some, some other stuff that I had. And then after that, um, I, I did another delivery as well. I'm actually needing to upload that video. This video here is a few days old and then the other one's a, a couple days old, I think. So the other video I'm delivering to a campground and it's just a truck load. It's not a full, you know, the double face cord load, I call them, yeah. where I've got the rails on and fill it up to that. Um, it's not, it's not that, um, it's just a regular truck load that I delivered to the campground. And they were asking a dollar per stick, uh, they said is what the people told me, you know, that bought the wood from me. They said that campground, you know, they had wood there at the campground, and they were asking a dollar per, per piece. So one piece of firewood was a dollar. So if you buy 10 pieces of firewood, that's $10, which to me is pretty is pretty expensive. Um, so we all know a piece of firewood isn't going to burn that long. So, um, But anyways, I seen the guy. He was set up there. It'll be in my next video. If I'm not mistaken, I caught that part. Um, and you can see the firewood he got set up there. And I seen him looking at me when I went in. He's probably thinking, look at this guy coming in here taking my business. Because um, he seen me come in there and drop a truckload to him. But that was Thursday. And they said they were staying until Sunday. So uh, that should be plenty enough wood for them uh, to last them till then. And uh, they asked me what was going on with the traffic. Because right now uh, we're having uh, court day in Mount Sterling, Kentucky court day. Which is Kentucky's biggest festival. And Otis Festival, if I'm not mistaken, started in the 1700s. And it's a huge festival. So he was asking me, so why is there so many yard sales out? And I kind of explained to him why. I said, well, the people know that they're going to get a lot of traffic through here from court day. Because they say like 50,000 people pass through um, over the weekend. So you get a lot of uh, people passing through. So it's perfect time for yard sales, really. I actually stopped at one today and got some stuff. And I'll... I, I'll uh, add that clip in the video. I haven't done that yet, but you'll see it. You'll have already seen it if, you, if you've made it this far, probably. Um, th this is the best smelling wood I've ever split. Here he is. And it splits great, too, honestly. It splits good. Some of this was kind of uh, a little twisted and naughty, uh, but even then, it still split pretty well. Cherry is one of my favorite woods to split, probably. Um, it smells really good. My, I, got a, I actually got a guy that, that has a smoker, that's wanting a load of this. So that, that'll be my next delivery is the guy with the smoker. And I may record that too because I'm going to start adding, uh, you know, the videos of the deliveries and stuff as well. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about canceling the membership things on my channel just because I've not really done anything with it, honestly. Like a lot of the videos that, you know, that I would put in the memberships, I'm I'm doing on my channel. So it's not really, doesn't really benefit anybody to be a member because of most of the stuff I'm putting on my channel instead of in memberships, you know. Um but anyway, so I don't even know if I continue with that. Um, but so far, uh, the temperatures here in Kentucky here lately have been getting down in the 30s. And that seems like when people really start calling. When they start feeling the temperatures change, some people go ahead and get their wood ahead of time, which is smart. Uh, but some people kind of wait until they start feeling that temperature change. And then it seems like the calls really pick up. Uh, so lately, I've just been trying to split wood, you know, have wood ready. Uh, for when they do call and then i've been delivering as well when they do call um but uh yeah the big truckload somebody asked me the other day if i had my suspension beefed up on my f-150 and if it was a f-150 it is a half ton and i do not have the suspension beefed up so that uh, that's definitely hard on them, and i know that so i'm i'm thinking of getting just a trailer you know a small trailer to where i can maybe fill the bed up uh but when i want to pull some more i can pull that trailer behind me because it does fine you know with just a uh, uh, a bed you know a level bed load but once you get above that yeah it's hard on a half ton um so i'm thinking about just getting a little small trailer to whenever i have the bigger deliveries to kind of just put that on the trailer as well that way the 
the axle from the trailer can support that weight. You still got to be careful because that weight will drag you around and pull you around. Um, but I've done it plenty with half tons. And even at my first year, I, deliver, I did it uh, with a Saturn View, delivered with a Saturn View and a 5x10 utility trailer, sometimes load it down with a uh, full quart of wood. So, um, but I, I do know as well that's dangerous. Uh, uh, tired right now. Sorry about that. I'm out here in my truck right now editing this video. I've had it for a while and I've just been mean to add this audio in here. Because me, myself, whenever I'm watching somebody hand split, I like to hear them talk while they're hand splitting. Or either, you know, add audio in like this. To me, it makes it a little more interesting than just watching splitting. Whenever somebody talks and stuff, especially if I enjoy what they're talking about. And so, and I, I mentioned this a while back, that comes down to what you, what your preference is. Some things some people will like and some, some things some other people won't like, you know. There's uh, channels I've unsubscribed from because I've, and, and honestly, I don't subscribe to a whole lot of channels, me, myself, I don't. Um, I'm not subscribed to really a whole lot of channels on YouTube. But the ones that I am subscribed to, like I've, I, usually I'll try to comment and, and show them support as well. Because I know what it takes uh, making the videos and and uh, and some people do it because they enjoy it. Like I, I enjoy it, you know. I'm not making money other than what little I'm making from the memberships and then uh, the merchandise, some on that. and But not really much at all, honestly. So, but But that's not why I'm doing it for anymore either. I did say that that's why I would start the memberships, but I'm not too concerned about it if I don't, because uh, I make my own money. Um, but I'm very happy to uh, to be in the firewood season again. And it's working good with Ron, too, getting a little bit of wood from him, but I've got so many locations. Um, it doesn't make sense to just buy it from him only, you know, and, and not go out and get it myself, because I maximize my profit in doing that. You know, the places that I get the wood from is right down the road, and it's good hardwood, so... Um, here soon I'm going to show that new location, Lord willing. Um, I've been there once or twice already, but I haven't uh, posted anything on that. But I'll show it here soon, and that'll be my main location. So I'll probably be out there quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> I just got to, uh, whenever it's muddy and stuff, not go out there. But I've got other places I can go uh, when it's not. And I got somebody else right now, actually, that's needing a tree out of their back lawn. And uh, they were messaging me about it, somebody in my family. So I'm planning to go there soon and get that tree cleaned up for them and um, and take it take it with me. Not even sure what it is yet, but uh, I'll bring you all along, Lord willing, when I go. And we'll see. Carter's been splitting with me again. He's loving it. And uh, I gave him that little blue saw. As, I got I to gotta post a video on that soon, though, actually. They've been messaging, commenting to me about it. I'm really bad about taking a long time to uh, get those posted, those review videos, because I always put other things before them honestly but i i need to do better with that honestly because they they're good enough to give you that equipment and they want you to do a review on it so i've got most of the video put together for that little wild badger i've just got to uh, post it which i plan i plan to maybe post that tomorrow maybe that and another video of the campground tomorrow um but yeah it's a good little saw for carter and i even told him it'd be fun for him to make like his own little video because he's 12 years old now he's getting close to you know a teenager he just turned 12 in, in uh, September. My little girl just turned uh, seven. So I've got two seven-year-olds now. They're, they're 10 months apart. They're both seven. My middle boy and, and my uh, little girl are both seven. My youngest, she'll be uh, three in January. And then Carter's 12. So uh, time goes by quick. But uh, he's, uh, he's just natural with an axe, Carter is. He really is. And uh, I felt like once I once I kind of learned the right techniques and stuff, I was t as well. Um, but Carter, I, I don't know if it's – he's natural for sure. He just naturally picks up stuff. But he watches me a lot too, so I do think that it helps. Because when you watch somebody and you know how, like I've said before, practice, good practicing. And I'm not no old wise man or nothing like that. But I'm just saying I know that to be true, practice, good practice. Because I've learned the hard way and not doing that and getting stuck in bad practices. Uh, so I know that practicing good practices from the beginning is really beneficial because then you then it becomes muscle memory, you know, and repetition, and you get stuck in something that's good rather than getting stuck and having to try to break habits that aren't good. So Carter's watched me for years now, you know, for for years, for around six years now, and uh, so he he's he's seen lots of different details and little tricks and and things like that but then i talked to him about it too but it surprised me how quick he picked it up with that flick technique uh we're gonna do a little hand splitting tomorrow actually on the cherry that that uh because ron brought me another load of cherry since this year i split just about all of this cherry and sewed sewed some of it to the campground 
and and the campground too i also mixed in i had two piles of uh i don't know if y'all remember that sycamore i brought home but there was some sycamore it was well seasoned now and some maple oak and some other stuff uh mixed together and they were different lengths so some of it was maybe 22 inches some of it was maybe eight inches and uh so i whenever the people with the camp uh, at the campground messaged me about it i asked them i said is it for a, a you know a campfire because i figured it was and i said so length doesn't matter does it you know as if it's mixed sizes and they said no as long as it burns and so that was perfect way for me to get rid of some of that wood because it's been sitting around for a while and it was all seasoned and solid but the thing is you let it sit too much longer after it seasons out some woods will uh, start to rot like some of the maple and stuff like that oak it takes a lot longer before it starts to rot so i was able to get rid of a lot of that wood at that campground and then i kind of piled some of the cherry on top of it um and uh, there were two men there when i pulled up and they kind of led me in they waited for me in a jeep and then i followed them in and we unloaded it they helped me unload it carter wasn't with me for that one but um he's wanting to really start splitting with me when i do these videos like you all see me you know buck the wood and hand split well carter's wanting to start splitting too he's wanting me to buck the wood and and uh once i once i get some stood up or maybe he stands some up him start splitting while i buck the rest and i'm fine with that me and my brother used to do it just like that um i would buck the wood and once i got some bucked you know my brother would start standing up and splitting them with the monster maw and and then i would uh once i got a, enough bucked that to where i thought it was efficient you know for the load that i had see i'm not sure what the time was on that probably and it wasn't pushing a real hard pace I haven't took any breaks with that um but that wasn't that much wood either but i got down just try to catch my breath let my heart rate come down but um when it cools off like this it's a lot easier than in the heat um for that i don't know 15 minutes or something i was splitting That's cherry wood pretty not too bad to split but actually some of that was pretty gnarly uh, in the middle and stuff like this piece here for example um like stuff like that even though it's cherry it's just uh it's a little tougher but it's not like it if it was oak and it was like that but um i've still got some more cherry to do but um he brought them to me he brought them to me that were different sizes and some of them was a little bit tall and kind of crooked like his chain was cutting to at an angle you know so i'm sure if you've had that happen you know a lot of you what causes that uh, maybe you hit something with um your chain and one direction you know the teeth going one direction got uh, maybe uh banged up a little bit and so they're duller than the other side and so it'll pull to that one side and that's what some of these did so i tried to get my saw and go around cutting on them and uh got a decent amount out of it got a guy wanting a load of just this right here cherry for smoking so and then he had that split already for me in that pile i just split that there not really a whole lot no breaks just pretty consistent somebody asked me the other day like how do i do it like how do i split all that wood do you take long breaks in between but no i don't now usually i'll go out here and i'll bring me something to drink and go ahead and eat before i come have plenty to drink though and then i'll stand my my rounds up maybe i'd say anywhere between 20 and 50 rounds sometimes and then i'll try to go until i uh, get all those rounds but now i will sit down um throughout for about 10 minutes or, so, or 10 minutes one minute at a time usually i'll sit down on like a round or something like that right there like oh kind of like i'm doing right now sit down and then uh once i'm sitting down like my heart rate's already came down and that's what causes it as you can see i'm breathing easier now my heart rate's down the sun is right in my eyes right there but um my heart rate's come down i'm breathing easier and what causes that is doing this consistently like i'm way overweight you know for my height i'm 270 right now so uh i'm gonna try to get that around 250. i know i've said that a lot and i have dropped some and then went right back up so so I just got to stay consistent with it. But 250 is what I'm aiming for. Because you can definitely feel it when you've got extra weight. And it doesn't benefit you um, when it's not good weight, you know. When it's functional weight, it can be definitely be beneficial for, like, lifting these rounds. And even for swinging a little harder. Because lots of people say it's only technique and all this. And that goes a long way with it for sure. But when you get into the tougher wood, power helps for sure. 
just like if you get a, a log splitter that's 24 ton compared to 34 ton there's going to be a difference in uh how well it split they're back there playing on that trampoline pretty day today nice day to get out and split too i'm loving getting back into firewood like this i really am i really enjoy firewood this to me is the uh this cherry is to me is it's the best smelling wood to me um but that's just me i think it smells really good and so anyways i've got enough to bring him a load the guy that's wanting uh the smoking well i think he'd only want like a half a truck load um so got plenty for that i've got a pile right there that he already split that's pretty neat seeing him i think he liked that fiskers a lot i think he said it was a good one or something he was calling it a mall he said where'd you get that splitting mall and i said that's a splitting axe actually i said it's a really good one he was asking how much it was and everything i gave him my monster mall um i told him he could borrow it at first it's a big monster mall i guess he's probably going to try to split some wood and sell it too and uh he sold a lot and he does tree work and stuff like that too um so he's been bringing me wood for a pretty good price and actually this is the first load i've actually had to pay for i think or no i think he did bring me a load of oak that i paid for before i can't remember um but it's, it's, it's pretty good prices for this stuff so i'm happy to do that and do it on my on my own as well so um I, I just want to sell a lot of wood this winter that's my goal sold a big load yesterday and uh just brings back memories when you're out doing this every year it does and it's a good memories too very good memories so i love firewood other people that do it probably know exactly what i'm talking about um some maybe love it more than others and have their different reasons for why a lot of it for me honestly was making a living in the winter because i needed something to keep me busy you know from landscaping so well i think when you're doing it like that you're a lot more motivated maybe i'm wrong though i could be wrong i think it just comes down to the individual too but definitely it definitely has more motivation for a man when he that's his uh his uh main income for his family so um but yeah i'm done with this i guess i'll go ahead and end it here this video will be long enough but some good cherry wood as you can see though i'm not breathing hard at all anymore or anything like that so i don't take long breaks with this i try to stay pretty consistent and i think something that's pushed me to do that like i said before you know um i think it's my first or second year this guy who i bought my dodge from my dodge ram that i used to have um he uh he bought five cords from me five full cords so i would bring i had a saturn view at the time a five by ten utility trailer and i would load that trailer up with the wood bring it out to him I mean, I had rails built on the trailer too, on this five by 10. So you're talking about three, four feet deep and a 10 foot trailer and it's just throwing it in there, you know, not stacking it, just throwing it, but filling it up. And so I would do that, filling it close to up anyways around that. And and once I fill it up, I bring it to him and he count out $200 right there, hand it to me. And so that was my motivation. You know, I'd turn around, go back, probably about 20 minutes the other way to the cattle farm. And I'd split some more of it. This cherry stuff right here is what it was too, a lot of it. He had a lot of those down there and locust um but um i'd go back and i'd split it do another one bring it to him count me another 200 and i did three of those in one day to the best of my memory from what i remember i did three of those big loads in a day and every time he'd count me out 200 and then the next day i think i did the other two for him and uh he's the one that i bought my my dodge truck from man didn't even know me and let me go ahead and take the truck uh, for a thousand dollars he was wanting three thousand altogether but he said, uh, I trust you. And he let me take it and signed it over to me and everything. And I paid him the other 1500 off because he ended up saying I could have it for 25 instead. And so it worked out really good. It was a, a game changer for me really in the firewood business because that four wheel drive just helped so much. Uh, so four wheel drive is something you kind of, you don't have to have it. I made it work without it for my first year, but it's something that definitely beneficial for if you're going out and getting the wood like I do. And honestly, in my opinion, if you're able to go out and get the wood to me that's and it's close to you if it's it's everybody's different sometimes it's not worth it to go far enough to you know and drive 30 minutes to get it um if you got somebody that can bring it to you you know and just it, it, it depends on what works best for you but what works best for me is going out and get the wood myself uh you know bucking it splitting it and loading it and finding somewhere where the wood's been down for quite a while and it's a good quality wood like oak because um oak doesn't rot quick like some woods do you know some woods they lay there for a couple years they're, they're rotten oak it takes you know a couple years for it to season really so but anyways anybody that, that's out there doing it just be safe um good to hear from all y'all in the comments and everything i'm gonna try to be as consistent with firewood as i can that's what i'm gonna focus on with my channel 
from here on mainly is firewood. Things may change later on where I show some other things as well, but it's mainly going to be planning for it to mainly be firewood. Um, that's what I'm doing, you know, a lot of the time, so I'm just kind of showing you that. But anyways, I'm glad to get this wood he just brought a little bit ago, and uh, probably within 30 minutes to an hour after he left, I went ahead and started cutting it up a little bit more and then start splitting on it. But anyways, that'll be good for now. Y'all be safe out there. God bless.